Okay, everyone. Uh, so a quick introduction about, about Linkurious. Uh, Linkurious is a graph visualization startup. <coughs> we help companies uh, understand and visualize graph data. And we have two main products, which are Linkurious Enterprise, an out-of-the-box uh, graph visualization platform, which is now uh, compatible with, uh, with TitanDB. And I will be giving you a demo of that uh, today. And Linkurious.js, which is a graph vis visualization library to build custom applications. And today, we are working with more than 200 customers worldwide. And, that, uh, and our customers include NASA, the space agency, uh, the French Ministry of Finances, Cisco, KPMG, um, and other blue chips companies. Um, today, for, for, the, for the presentation of, uh, of Linkurious and, uh, and Titan, uh, we will be joined uh, by uh, Jean-Baptiste Musso. And I will let Jean-Baptiste introduce himself. So thank you. I hope everyone can hear me properly now that I switched the microphone. Thanks. Um, so as I said, I guess no, no one uh, heard the word of what I said. So um, I would like to thank you, uh, to, to say thank you to Linkers for inviting me. Um, today I'm very happy to do this webinar with you. I would like to thank everyone also for joining uh, early in the morning, maybe for you. Um, I thought it would be a, a good idea to give um, some information uh, about me. Um, I am the author of Gremlin JavaScript, which is a Node.js browser client for Gremlin Server, which I've been developing for the last uh, two years. Um, it, uh, I'm, I've been tinkering with graphs since 2000, 2013. Um, and some use cases I've been working on uh, include electrical networks, IT data modeling, and social networks here in, in Paris, France. I am also uh, informally a member of Tinkerpop, which means basically that I <coughs> tend to answer stuff on the mailing list and provide support. Um, and you can also uh, follow me on Twitter as Chibi Miso. So what is a graph? Um, a graph um, is a quite simple, simple data structure, actually. Um, it consists of vertices and um, and edges, and typically vertices, which can also be refer referred to as nodes, um, will map to real world things. Things think about objects. And um, edges, um, I hope you can uh, everyone uh, see the, the mouse cursor. Maybe, maybe not. Edges are relationships between between nodes. So vertices and edges can have properties which describe them further and. The special thing about edges is that they also have a direction. So an edge point from one vertex to another vertex. So that's it. These are the key concepts that, that you need to, to be comfortable with in order to, to understand what a graph is. So a graph is only consists of what I will refer to as first class citizens, which are vertices and edges. Um, as I said, vertices and edges have properties, and edges also have a direction. Um, when, when you think about graphs, there are no concept of tables, rows, and columns, which uh, exist in a relational database. Um, there are no concept of collections and documents, or concepts of keys and values. Uh, the only thing that you should care about are vertices and edges. Um, So what is Titan? Um, Titan is the graph database, which has the characteristic, the main characteristic of being able to be distributed horizontally, scalable, and transactional. It is designed for graphs of any size, from tiny to massive. And by massive, um, I mean 100 of billions of vertices. Um, 
Titan has a reputation of only being able to handle massive crowds, but it also works pretty well with smaller crowds, which can fit on a single machine. So do not be afraid and try to experiment with a small, a small graph using Titan. You will get, uh, you will get into it quickly. You will not have to, to configure a complex cluster. Um, you can restart well with uh, a single machine. Uh, Titan is also very pluggable, and by pluggable, I mean that um, Titan was designed from scratch um, for being able to to use any kind of sort of storage backends. Storage backends is where the the graph gets ultimately persisted, and it, it, and it also has support for optional indexing backends and analytics engine. I, um, I will get into the details uh, later. One. Key characteristic of Titan is that it is open source with a library license, with the, which is the Apache 2 license. It is very uh, liberal, and basically, you will never have to pay anything for, uh, for Titan. And Titan also natively integrates with the Apache Tinkerbell framework, which um, allows you to issue kernel queries, which maybe most of you should be familiar with. Uh, so why is it exciting? So um, I made a typo here, sorry. Um, so, as I said, the two characteristics of Titan is that it scales really, really well, and it's free. And how does it, uh, how the, why does Titan scale? Um, Titan is a graph abstraction of our solid big data tools, which um, most of you should be familiar with if you are interested in big data. So, Titan tries to not reinvent the wheel, and it is built on top of solid, better proven open source technology. So, as I said, the data gets persisted to, to, to one mandatory storage backend. So natively, Titan has integration with Cassandra or HBase on Berkeley DB. Um, but the cool thing is, by being pluggable, you can also implement sort of, um, any, any storage backend. So the folks at Amazon Web Services uh, recently published a DynamoDB backend. So the, the key, the main benefit is that you to not have uh, the burden of managing your own distributed cluster, which can be quite a difficult task. So um, this is a typical example of what you can get when using Titan with a uh, pluggable backend. Titan also has support for uh, an optional for optional backends. Actually, you can have several backends working, uh, indexing backends working at the same time. And it's, Titan has native integration with Elasticsearch, Lucene, and Solar. And most of the time, people will use Elasticsearch and benefits of the of the full um, elastic search uh, suite, uh, and and tools such as Kibana. and Titan also has native integration with um, processing engines uh, which are Hadoop, Spark, and Giraffe. So the immediate benefits of using Titan is that if you know how to scale these tools, you already know how to scale Titan, and this is um, a much needed characteristic in teams because. Most, uh, most teams do not have the time to learn new tools, and uh, they tend to like to work with tools they are already familiar with. So it saves you a lot of time figuring out how to make these tools work together. So you could make Elasticsearch and, and Spark work with other mm -hmm. databases, but you will most likely spend quite a lot of time, and basically, you might just end up reinventing parts of Titan. So it would be nice, a good idea, to just use Titan and go and um, and work on your business case uh, sooner. Um, so, um, sorry, Titan has a native um, support for the Apache Tinkerbob framework. And the Apache Tinkerbob is a, a nice, a, a very nice uh, abstraction of our, um, uh, a nice framework which allows you to, to create and mutate graphs uh, in a unified way. Um, Tinkerbob are support for both graph databases and graph analytics systems. Uh, Tinkerbob allows you to execute ground queries over any graph database that implements the Tinkerbob API. Tinkerbob has uh, support for multiple language uh, drivers bindings. So uh, most of the time, you will see um, um, you will see Gremlin queries written in Groovy, but uh, there are also supports for Java, PHP, Node.js, or Python. Um, so I can pop, uh, sorry, Tinkerbob also has support for compiled to Gremlin languages. Um, this is an experimental feature, but you 
there are projects which are you to have spiritual craze or sexual craze compared to gremlins. So what this means in practice is that you can um, query any graph implementing, including Titan, any graph implementing the Tinker Pop API and, uh, and just query them, uh, create these graphs with sexual or spiritual. Uh, and Titan, Tinker Pop, sorry, is also open source with a library license. Um, so why it's exciting? Cyclone, as I said, was built in from the beginning for uh, handling massive graphs. So it has, in my opinion, what's, what's nice with Cyclone is that it allows you to, um, to handle supernodes. So just a quick definition, a supernode is a, a vertex with a high number of incident edges. So just think about Justin Bieber on Twitter, and um, you know, it's like dozens of millions of followers. I actually didn't check uh, lately, but uh, super nodes are, um, depending on your on your model, are, can be tend to be rare. However, um, the probability of traversing through a super node is not that low. And when you have to to traverse a graph and you hit the super node, you can you can easily have performance issues. So Titan has several features for handling supernodes. Uh, the first one is vertex-centric index. Basically, you index relationships for faster edge processing. So this will allow you, allow you to answer a query such as who are Justin Bieber's latest 15, 15, uh, 50 followers. So if you have billions of vertices, you can decide to uh, so, sorry, billions of vertices following uh, the vertex, uh, the, the Justin Bieber vertex, you can index uh, the relationships by, uh, by a given timestamp in the descending ordering, and you will be able to quickly retrieve the latest 50 followers. So, Titan so also has a nice, uh, nice feature which allows you to, this is the second feature, the vertex cut, which allows you to store the, uh, a vertex over, over several machines, um, and it does so transparently, so you do not have to to clone and, and split the vertex on several machines. So, uh, what the benefits of this is that you get more compute power when you traverse these graphs because several machines will work in parallel and allows you to traverse this uh, this supernode faster. And Titan also has support for unidirected edge uh, for one-way traversing in the, in the outgoing direction only. Uh, the benefits of this is that you get a lower storage footprint. So I won't go too much into the details of the low-level Titan data model, but basically um, edges are stored twice. And if you decide to use unidirected edges, uh, you cut the storage footprint by two. Uh, a real-world equivalence of a unidirected ed edge is edge rate links from pages you know, over the internet. Um, what this means is that a page knows where it points to, but there is no way to know what points to a page. So for unidirected edge, the best uh, thing to, to remember are hash rate links. So why it's, why it's exciting, um, oops, sorry, I forgot to edit the header. Um, graphs are exciting because the general use cases of graphs are social networks, uh, CMDB, which allows you to um, maintain a collection of devices, typically of, uh, of devices and relationships between devices um, on the network. Um, virtual machines, stuff like this. It's also uh, nice to model cybersecurity domain. It's also useful for for an intelligence business as well as medics or, or stuff like user access management. Uh, a typical queries, typical queries include recommendation engines. Uh, think about uh, user users who bought this specific I. Uh, item also about this and these items. Um, it is very nice for parallel matching and typically fraud detection. The graphs are also nice for short sparse calculation, typically maps, uh, get me from point A to point B using the fastest way or the, short, uh, the shortest way. Um, typical graph queries also include page rank uh, algorithm. 
uh, and also um, another example on scalable timelines and use switch, which can be quite complicated uh, to scale. Um, and that's it. I will give uh, the microphone back to Jean, uh, which we talked about graph visualization. Thank you. Thanks, Jean-Baptiste. So <clears throat> thanks for this introduction to, uh, to, to Titan uh, and why it's interesting to, uh, to, to use graph DBs like, like that. So uh, right now, I would like to start talking about visualization in, uh, in the context of, uh, of, uh, of Titan. Why, why would one want to, to visualize graph, uh, graph data? So there are actually some, uh, some good reasons for, for that. Um, I think jean Matisse mentioned some of the use cases um, traditionally associated with, uh, with graph databases. Um, and, uh, and in some of these use cases, like, for example, recommendation, um, actions can be automated on an e-commerce platform implementing uh, a recommendation algorithm backed by Titan. Um, all the decisions are going to be automatic, and, uh, and uh, the end user, the customer, will see um, uh, recommendations depending on his uh, journey on, on a website without any human, uh, human inter in, uh, interaction. But in other cases, it's important to, uh, uh, to have a human element uh, in, a, in the decision chain. Because sometimes um, the decisions cannot be automated. There's a high degree of, of, uh, of uncertainty. Um, and uh, and uh, there are also false positives or an inherent complexity uh, to, uh, to, to the data. That, uh, and that means that um, it's important for, to involve a human person to analyze and, uh, and take a decision. Uh, sometimes that could be closing uh, uh, an account in the case of fraud detection. It can be prosecution when we are talking about, uh, about uh, anti-terrorism, for example. Or it can be just you know, to, to dismiss um, a potential alert. So in all these cases, it's very important to have a human person involved in, in the decision process. And that's where visualization is very important. Graph visualization can help analysts understand uh, graph data and then make smart de decisions. Um, it it helps the investigation of the dubious uh, cases, and it gives analysts um, um, a power, uh, super power, I'd say, uh, which is the ability to identify indirect connections, uh, find new, new evidence, or uh, find hidden insights. And uh, graph visualization is also very important to communicate with, uh, with other people. So these are some of the reasons why graph visualization is so, so important. Um, we have customers using, uh, using it in the context of, uh, of fraud detection, uh, of, uh, of cyber security, uh, of supply chain analytics, or medical research. So, so here are some of, the, of these examples. Uh, on the left, we can see fraud detection. And, uh, and uh, banks, insurance companies implementing uh, linked use and uh, a graph database like Titan uh, can, uh, can focus on connections between names, uh, addresses, phones, transactions. And then it's important to use graph visualization to investigate the suspicious transactions or individuals and make smart decisions. Uh, in the context of network management, then we are talking about servers connected to services, to applications, to users, and visualizing that data is important to run impact analysis or to investigate and uh, mitigate cyber, cyber security incidents. And finally, uh, in the context of knowledge management, uh, management, we are talking about documents connected to concepts, to offers, or to organizations. And here, in this context, graph visualization and linkers can help uh, find experts or important topics hidden in, a, in, in, in the graph. So these are some of the examples that, uh, uh, that uh, we are familiar with, uh, and that uh, our customers use linkers for. And now I would like to, to talk, um, to give you a demo of linkers enterprise uh, and Titan via uh, a fraud-related uh, use case. So let me, uh, let me switch my screen to, uh, and start a, a demo. There we are. So right now, we are connected to, uh, to uh, Titan uh, Graph Database, in which we are storing information regarding uh, 
um, regarding um, uh, customer data in uh, insurance company. And we are going to investigate a potential fraud that involves uh, a person called John Piggyback. So we are going to, uh, to, to search the graph data and try to find some information regarding him and figure out together whether he's a real fraudster or not. So let's, let's start with uh, looking up uh, John Piggyback. Oops. Okay, so I'm, I'm ty typing, uh, typing in his name and we are running full text search uh, on, a, on a graph data using uh, the power of Elasticsearch, which Jean-Baptiste mentioned. Uh, so here is the, the one node that we are interested in. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to start, start exploring the, the data. So here is uh, John Piggyback. And I can see that uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a customer of, a, of the company. And I can click on expand here. And if I click on extend, then I'm going to see all the address. It's related to one names, to one phone number, and one social security number. If I want to, uh, to uh, traverse the graph and uh, get one of these connections, I can click uh, on it. So for example, here I'm going to click on as address. And I'm going to traverse the graph and see that John is connected to Eisenhower Street. But I can also double click on John and get all the data at once. So now I'm looking at everything John is connected in my data set. So John is here is connected to an address, it's connected to a phone number, it's also connected to an email address and a social security number here. And finally, it's connected to two, uh, two claims. So one here and other one here. And I can inspect these different elements. So here, for example, this property damage claim uh, as, a, as an amount which is $51,000. This one is uh, a $49,000 claim. And I can, I can inspect these different entities. What's, what's interesting to me as an analyst here is that I can see that this phone number right here is connected to, a, to another entity. So uh, this is something of interest, and uh, I want to know more about that connection, uh, that, uh, the connection that John has with, uh, with someone else. So I'm going to double click on the phone number, and here I can find a new connection, which I didn't know about, uh, between John here and, uh, and Polar. So John is connected to Polar, and I'm going to double click on Polar. And I'm going to see now that Paula herself is connected to one address right here. It's Pasadena Street, located in California. She's also connected to a social security number. So all this uh, sounds perfectly legitimate, by the way. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, John is not, is not connected to, 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 to this address and is not connected to uh, that, um, that security number. So these two persons are just sharing one, uh, one, uh, one phone number at this point. Uh, so perhaps there, there can be a legit, leg, legitimate story here. Perhaps uh, John switched his, 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 his phone number, or uh, this, uh, this is a couple and they are sharing uh, a landline or something like that. OK, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's go a step further. Here we can see that Pola is connected to um, to an email address, soluta at uh, hotmail.com. Uh, and, uh, and that email address has a little one next to it. So that indicates that uh, the address is also connected to an entity. I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to find out that uh, the address is also used by Werner Stidman. And I'm going to double click on Werner and see that. Werner himself is connected to a, to a few other, uh, other entities. So we started with, with John here, found an, in, an indirect connection through phone number with Paula. And now we are finding out that uh, Werner is, uh, is indirectly connected to Paula via uh, this, uh, this email address. So this is starting to, to look a bit suspicious. Um, in uh, the insurance world, um, the fraud analysts are familiar with uh, people who are 
uh, scamming insurance companies by creating fake identities um, and, uh, and, uh, and filling real claims. Here, um, we may be looking at, uh, at a group of fraudsters recycling uh, pieces of information like emails and, uh, and phone numbers to create fake identities and defraud the, the insurance companies. So let's, let's uh, keep on going. Uh, I'm going to double click on the property damage claim. And here, uh, we have seen something very interesting uh, happening. So we are sort of closing the loop here. We, starting with, we started with John, John then uh, went to Paula, then to, to Werner. And now, uh, as we expanded uh, the entities connected to, uh, to the claim Werner is involved in, uh, we find out that that claim has, has, is connected to two evaluators. So we have Patrick Collison here and uh, Kill, yeah, Killy Bills here, uh, so a lawyer and an evaluator. And these two persons not only are connected to Werner's claim, but they're also connected to the two claims uh, John, or starting point, is involved in. OK, so, so what, what is going on here? Um, what we are looking at uh, is probably a group of, of fraudsters recycling, uh, recycling and identities and uh, they are uh, most certainly colluding with the lawyer, the evaluator, to um, together as a group uh, create fake, uh, fake, uh, fake claims, which are then green lighted by the evaluator and the lawyer uh, and, uh, and transform it into cash uh, that the, the forces can, um, can finally uh, get their hands on. So here we have been able to investigate uh, this, uh, this graph data visually, interactively, um, in a very, very easy, uh, easy fashion, and um, get a good understanding of what is co going on. Um, we see that, uh, that kind of, uh, of uh, analysis out there, out there on the field, um, used by uh, our customers in combination with uh, graph analytics, like, uh, like for example, uh, pattern matching, um, that uh, surface uh, potential fraud cases, and then visualization is used as a way to turn these uh, these potential uh, these alerts about potential uh, fraud cases into uh, into decisions. And here we have we have seen how easy it is to uh, to, to investigate the, the graph data. Um, I can I can uh, I can slice and dice the, the data that I'm currently looking at. If, for example, I want to, uh, to filter on a specific part of, of my data set, and I want to remove, say, uh, the addresses, the, the social security numbers, I can you know, click on the design panel here, click on categories, and I'm going to uh, select, uh, select the claims, the customers. Um, I also want the, the email addresses, the phones, the evaluators, and lawyers. But I don't want to see the, the social security numbers. In, um, in yellow here, like this one, this one, or this one. And I don't want to see either uh, the, uh, the addresses. So I've selected everything else. I'm hitting filter now. And what happens is that uh, I've removed from my visualization the entities I was not in interested in. And I've created a filter which appear, appears right here. And if I want, I can combine different filters to really slice and dice the data um, and, uh, and turn a um, um, complex graph into something that is easier for me to understand uh, as an analyst. And I can do these kinds of operations without, um, without having to, to write any uh, gremlin uh, queries. So here we, are, we have narrowed down our investigation and we have found something which is uh, of interest. If we want, we can also edit the data. And here I could, uh, for example, add a new, a new person. Let's say that uh, I found out that uh, uh, there's someone else involved in, in, in the case. So I want, I want to, um, to add a new, a new customer. Uh, and I'm going to say that uh, this name is, his name is going to be Jean. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to give him a, a, a name. It's going to be Jean, Jean, Jean Curlier, for example. Let's go with that. 
I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to hit save. And uh, the, the new customer is being added to, uh, to a Titan DB. And I can see him right here. I can also, if I want to, I can delete him. Oh, we are removing him from all data sets. Um, if I want to, I can switch from one, uh, one way to representing the layout, um, the data, to another one. Here, I'm clicking uh, on, the, on the bottom right corner of the screen, and I'm going to choose to, to use a Yahoo layout and displaying the data from top to bottom. OK. We can go back to the 408 layout if you want to. And if we had um, data with uh, geographical coordinates, we could also uh, switch to, uh, to a geographical, uh, geographical layout. And then basically display the, the data uh, on, a, on, on, a, on, a, on a map. OK. Uh, if we want, we can search more, more nodes or edges here using the, the search engine. We can uh, find the shadow path by specifying two nodes, a starting point and a, an end point. And then we can find the shadow paths between these two nodes. No code required. And finally, if we want to, we can, uh, we can type patterns, um, cipher or gremlin patterns, uh, very, uh, very easy. OK. Um, no, we want to uh, to save the the, the 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 visualization. So I'm going to give it a name. That's going to be case number three. And say save it, saving that. And if I want to, I can share that visualization with someone else within my organization. Let's say that I'm working with John. Say I'm taking John right now. I'm adding him to the to the document. And next time John opens up in Curious, he would be able to view that visualization that I've shared with him. OK, I'm closing that menu now. Uh, I can also export the visualization to a number of formats. I can export it to, a, to an Excel spreadsheet if I want to, uh, to a CSV file, to a GraphNL, JSON, or Giphy file. I can also export it to a SVG or PNG, PNG picture to include in my next, uh, next PowerPoint presentation if I want to. Closing that now. I can also publish the visualization as a widget to be embedded uh, into, uh, into another web page. Let's say an application that, uh, that my organization is, uh, is using. I can, I can embed that, uh, that, uh, that widget in, a, in that application. And I can generate these widgets through the, the Linkus Enterprise API. OK, going back now, going back again to the, to the dashboard. We can see here the, the, the visualization that we, uh, that we just created. Um, and in addition to this graph expression interface that I showed you, uh, you can also, um, you can also uh, have access to an admin dashboard in a in Linux enterprise where you can set uh, access rights for, your, uh, for the data which you are store, storing on, on Titan. You can, um, you can define different user groups and assign these groups different, uh, different rights. So for example, I could say that Jean-Baptiste here is working with me as an analyst, uh, and as such, is, is allowed to view the customers and the claims, but he should not be able to view, uh, for example, the, the names of the uh, of the of the lawyers, the the emails of uh, um, which are in, in in my data set, and I can make that kind of a, of a, of a, of, a, of security choices via via visual interface. Finally, it's uh, it's important to note that um, you can integrate Linux Enterprise with uh, with other uh, applications in, uh, in your uh, in your data center. You can call. Um, uh, a visualization via uh, via uh, via simple link. Uh, so, for example, you can add a link within a, your existing application that will generate uh, uh, a visualization in in in, in, in an enterprise. Or you can embed uh, vis 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 visualizations generated by Linux enterprise um, into your your applications. 
So it's really uh, it's really something that you can integrate uh, in your uh, new IT architecture. Okay, I'm stopping the, the, the demo now. Going back to the to the presentation for for a minute, and I will uh, I will let uh, Jean Baptiste uh, Jean Baptiste finish. Okay, so we do stuff. Uh, we want to supplement. Uh, here, here, here we can see that uh, that uh, if you want to, uh, to take this further, you can try a demo online of of introduce, and you can also. I see the, the different features, um, view the documentation, or uh, actually download and, and use um, all issues such as graph visualization library. And finally, you can uh, buy the license for falling curious uh, online. So I'm um, okay, thanks. Turn the microphone back. I wanted to add that if you want to get uh, more information about Titan and the Apache Tinkerpot framework, you, I strongly encourage you to visit uh, these links, uh, especially the Apache Tinkerpot documentation, uh, which is very well written and you will learn a lot about crafts. Uh, I encourage you to read, the, read this again, maybe just bookmark or set a new home page to your favorite browser. Um, if you're curious about um, JavaScript, um, feel free to, to check out my GitHub repository on Gremlin Queries. So we'll be about to issue um, and, and play issue Gremlin Queries and play um, with with Titan or any um, like think about the compliant graphs uh, directly from the browser. So feel free to, to check out, ask uh, ask for help uh, in the issue tracker, and I will be very happy to, to provide support. Thanks, Jean-Baptiste. Uh, thank you for, for joining us today. Um, if you have uh, any questions or want to discuss your, uh, your visualization needs uh, related to, uh, to Titan, uh, feel free to, to reach out at contact at uh, uh, We'd love to, uh, to hear about, uh, about your projects and see if we, uh, if we can help. Uh, so thank you again, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, and, uh, and I hope that we that we'll hear from you uh, soon. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye.